today. Today we're going to feature the making of uh, two loaves of French bread, two loaves from one recipe. Now you have choices of uh, what flour to use for this uh, French bread recipe. One would be the uh, perhaps the more traditional um, all-purpose flour. In recent years I've tended to go for the uh, Robin Hood bread flour as opposed to all-purpose. I find that uh, it gives a much nicer, smoother texture. And so it's simply called uh, Robin Hood Best for Bread Flour. Et en français, farine à pain. And so we're going to start off then with uh, the liquid ingredients, which will be one cup of water, a half cup of milk, and one and a half tablespoons of shortening. My preferred brand is Crisco, but uh, you choose what you wish. So to start, we're going to uh, heat the water in a microwave for uh, two minutes and 40 seconds. So here we are putting the water in the microwave. And we're going to set it for two minutes and 40 seconds. So now the water is heated up. We put the milk in, half cup, and set the nuker for one minute and 20 seconds. So that's it for the milk, and that uh, is now scalded. And we'll put in shortening, and we'll set the timer for the shortening then for 60 seconds. This is now the melted shortening. Okay, so what I do is uh, I use a KitchenAid uh, professional tabletop mixer to uh, electric mixer to do the uh, mixing and the kneading of the of the uh, dough so this bowl then is from the KitchenAid mixer in which I put a flour sifter and then I'm going to pour in the four cups of flour and then I add two teaspoons of sugar and two teaspoons of salt. I'm doing it outside of the bowl in case I spill some, which is always likely to happen. So that's one, and we always use in the kitchen for uh, cooking or um, adding to cooked foods afterwards sea salt which is calcium chloride as opposed to table salt, which is sodium chloride. So this is uh, much better for you. And now we're ready to sift the old fashioned way. And so now we have well mixed, well sifted flour, salt and sugar. Okay, so now we're going to mix the hot water, the scalded milk, and the melted shortening. And I'm going to put these in a in a bowl with cold water. And we'll check the uh, temperature. And the temperature is now about 40 degrees, so we're going to just leave that until it cools down to 30, which is the ideal temperature for yeast. Okay, so this is a, a digital thermometer that I use uh, usually for these sorts of things. And I've already put one teaspoon of um, sugar in the bowl. To this we're going to add roughly a quarter cup of warm water. And if we measure the temperature here, it's coming up at uh, 29 degrees. So I have my own built-in thermometer here. So now we're going to use uh, Fleischmann's traditional dry yeast. And we're going to put in three teaspoons of this Fleischmann's traditional dry yeast. And then I just use a fork to uh, blend it all, make sure the sugar is dissolved and the yeast is well spread out. 
So now I have a uh, large bowl that I put in hot water from the tap. And then I take the bowl that has the yeast mixture in and just let it float. And the purpose of this is that the, and every so often I'll turn the bowl around, but the purpose of this is to keep a warm temperature going on the yeast so that it will rise properly over the next 10 minutes. Okay, I'm going to take the uh, milk and water mixture out of the cold water bath because the uh, temperature has come down to 30 degrees. And I'm going to add two teaspoons of sugar. Okay, the yeast is now done after 10 minutes and it's uh, risen quite a bit. We'll take it out of the heating bowl and pour it into the milk and water mixture. Stir that up and move on to the next phase. Okay, so I'm going to put the bowl of flour that's been sitting very patiently and put on the dough hook, lock it in place, and we'll raise the bowl and pour in the liquid. I'm going to take a spatula and get all of the yeast mixture in there. There's no point wasting any. Yeah, I'm going to put this on uh, speed 2 and no higher. I'm going to set it at uh, speed 2 and let it blend for a couple of minutes. And I'm just going to look at it until the, uh, the flour forms into a ball. And I may have to add a bit more flour, uh, the, and we'll get to that in a couple of minutes. So we'll do this now for a couple of minutes and get back to you. Okay, so the, uh, the dough is getting pretty well mixed, and what we're going to look for is uh, for the dough to become a, a more or less cohesive ball. And uh, I don't see any of the dried flour, but we'll just let it mix here now. We're going to set uh, a timer for six minutes, and that'll be the total kneading time. So we've reached a time of about two or three minutes for the initial mixing, and I've stopped the machine, and I'm going to just feel the dough. It's a little tacky, a little sticky. So I'm going to add, oh, maybe a couple of... Uh, tablespoons of, of flour and I'm just going to dust the surface like so and start it up again at speed 2. So it's uh, started up again now at speed 2. And we'll wait for the, uh, for the dough to become a cohesive ball again and check to make sure that it's not too tacky on the outside and if it is we'll just simply add a bit more flour. Okay so the kneading is done now keep in mind, uh, you don't have to rush out and buy one of these KitchenAid devices. You can do the kneading by hand, which I did for decades. Uh, but it's just now we have this machine, so why not use it? So we'll lower the bowl, take out the hook. Then we'll take the dough out and just put it on, uh, on a board and just form it into a bit of a ball, if it isn't already. And I'm going to take a bit of flour and put back in the bowl just so that the rising dough doesn't stick too much. It will stick to the side of it, but uh, it'll be minimal. So I'm going to put this back in the bowl and put a nice white, well it doesn't have to be white obviously, uh, nice, what is important is that it's clean. And we'll let this rise now for two hours. Okay, as you can see, there's a bit of light coming through the uh, window. And over a period of two hours, that might cast uh, a little too much warmth. So I'm just going to move this out of the uh, direct light. And we'll be back to you in uh, two hours. Okay, we're ready to go on to the next phase. The uh, dough has risen. I let it go for an extra half hour for a total of two and a half because the temperature in the house today was just a, a little cool. 
So we'll just free it up from the ball. And plunk it down there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, this is going to be the dough for two loaves of bread. So I'm going to cut it more or less in half. I'm not actually going to weigh the two halves to make sure I'm within half a gram. Now instead of using a, um, a board to roll out the, uh, the dough, I prefer to use this cloth from uh, Lee Valley Tools. And you can probably get it elsewhere, but that's where this came from. And this works extremely well uh, for, for this job. And when you're done, you just fold it back up, put it in a bag, and keep it in the fridge. Now, for the rolling pin, this is uh, my favorite one here. And I'll put uh, just a bit of flour on it so things don't stick. I'll get this bowl out of the way. And we'll go to it. Now, as it turns out, nothing particularly planned, uh, but the, the shape of the dough tends to be a bit of a triangle, um, and that's okay, because in the end it'll be, uh, it'll be just fine. So I don't tend to worry about the shape so much, but I'm going to roll this out into as much of a rectangle as possible. Okay, so the thickness, as you can see, is... Um, about a quarter of an inch, maybe a, a tad thicker, but don't bother taking a, a tape measure, that's really not necessary. Now the next process then is the rolling of the loaf. And we'll okay, so we're going to start rolling from the top, and I'm going to take it just one turn, and then use my fingers to press down into the dough. Okay, so we press it down into the dough, and then do another turn. And what I do as I go along is just brush off any excess flour and then press it down into the dough and repeat. And then we come to the end, brush off the excess. And that we're, what I'm going to do is to tuck in the ends, like so. So the next step then is to uh, lift the cadaver and move it over here. Actually, it's not a cadaver, it's living. And then we do the same thing with the second one. Now, to make it look a little pretty, after the baking process, I'm going to add four slashes. One, two, three, four. I'm going to make that one a little deeper. Okay, so now we go through the second rising, and this will be for an hour and a half. So, we'll see you back in an hour and a half. Okay, so the bread has now uh, gone through its second rising, ready to go in the oven. So, out comes the bread. And this is the getting into the final stage. What we have here is one egg white and one tablespoon of water. So we're just going to brush the loaves. This will give them a, a bit of a shine. Okay, now we're done. Insulated glove back on. Okay, so the French bread comes out of the oven. There we are. And shake it up a little bit here. We're going to then take them out and put them on a rack to cool. There's one. And there's its twin. So there we are.
final step is to put a cloth over them so that they um, don't dry out. And then I'm going to hear a voice from the kitchen begging, yes, begging, can we cut the bread now? And I'm going to say, not yet. <laughs>